Hello everyone, this is Wenbo. Today I'm going to do a very quick Blender tutorial to show you some tricks in lighting. Yeah, that's right, lighting. A lot of comments I received from YouTube and Instagram, people wanted to know more about lighting in Blender. All right, here we go. So as you can see here, I'm actually pick really reflective surface that a lot of people have in challenges. But as you can see, look, the result looks pretty nice. How did I do it? Okay, let me kind of let you see what's the, the material of all these silverwares. So basically it's a very simple one. So if you can look at it, it's just the basic principle BSDF. And what I did, I just kind of drag this whole slider to be one, the metallic, because it's metal, of course. And then the default usually is the 0.5. I'm just dragging the roughness all the way to close to zero not exactly so that's all i did that's all i did for this material then why it looks so good well because it's because the lighting is not a, a lot of times in cg or in blender it's not about your materials it's about the light and uh, for a lot of people don't know too much about lighting yeah of course you have some challenges when you finish your masterpiece of modeling certain items but the renders come out just way off it doesn't look realistic because i'm a product photographer i have pretty strong understanding about how light works and i just kind of like mimic the the real world lighting situation in the CGI so that it, you can actually know how to do that properly and uh, to actually have some really good photorealistic result in the in the blender. So let me show you uh, where is the, how the scene has been built and uh, as you know I only use one light to creating this type of look okay so for product photographers when we're looking at a, a certain you know uh, materials and the way of photographing uh, things any product we're looking for gradients right it looks like these nice gradients from white to dark and very in the crisp lines to showing the very re reflective texture of the surface this is what we're trying to do um, that's how and it also it's very challenging to do in, in real life and when you're photographing these type of uh, silverwares and now uh, in a, a, a real a photography studio okay let's see what's going on let's go to the solid mode as you can see here i'm actually let me go to the the layout i'm actually using a very interesting environment right here so this is actually just a plane and this is actually the the light well, i'm going to show you how to do the material with that so let's hit the h so temporary hide it and uh here's another cylinder but the cylinder without top caps, right? I'm just put gem this in. One of the things that uh, you you need really need to understand that when you're photographing or lighting a, a reflective surface of your your anything, it's not about uh, what kind of light hitting on the subject. It's more about about the surroundings, right? Same thing for glasses. Okay, the one I, I chose was for metal. So basically, what I did. In the, in the real world, in the studio, in the real world, you're actually going to utilizing some kind of diffusion panels or something to kind of cover up the surrounding of your object. You, because this thing is like, you see the curvatures, like a lens, like a uh, very curved reflective. It's gonna, like a mirror. It's gonna reflect everything around it. In order to make a control of it, so we are going to using, using a, a cylinder tube or a big giant tube to kind of cover up part of this surrounding of course we have the other side is just the, the ground the landing ground and then we are going to use this soft light we built to cover up the whole thing and in the in the realities in the in if i'm a photographer i'm going to photograph this scenarios what i can do i'm actually think about this is going to be a big light okay in in the real world i have to kind of cut a hole or dig a hole in order to let the the real camera lens to kind of look through to in order to see what's going on inside of this environment but with a 3d yeah I've, amazingly i don't need to do anything i don't need to cut out a a big hole of that uh a light 
and uh, everything just works just fine. So how, let me show you how can I do that. So first of all, this is soft light right here. Let me show you the texture of that shading. And you can see here, ooh, it looks very complicated, right? Yeah, you don't have to, to really just do that and uh, at the beginning, especially your beginner. But uh, one thing I want to really want to show you is, uh, is the, the, the light that I often use to lighting my scenes, especially when I working lighting something very reflective like glass or anything. So I'm actually going to, to, uh, to shift A to build a, a plane to do that. And uh, then I'm going to turn this to the view. Do that. Shit. Uh, hit S and turn it on. Let me turn on the mm, shortcut key real quick. Ooh, where is that? Yeah, okay. Turn this thing on. Uh, and then we have that, right? Just as regular plane. You can, you know how to do that. And then I'm actually, actually going to add a texture with it. Uh, hit a new and then I'm going to delete this principal PSDF. Hit X and shift A to add a emission shader. What does emission means? Emission means the light. Basically, that's what it is. And if I'm going to the render view, you will see this is just a one light. Uh, it's kind of having these certain shapes. So, you know, it's a very even light and um, it looks like just soft box, but a very evenly lit. Well, in the real world, in, in photographies, this type of light is very challenging to find because there's no actually any uh, lighting fall off on the corner of anything. It's, it's not really realistic, you know, but it, it, but some situations, yeah, you need to have some special light just to do this type of thing. Uh, in order to really um, mimic the, the real lighting scenarios, I'm actually gonna do something to make this light looks more realistic. So which means I'm going to add a, a, a gradient texture, okay? Gradient texture, put on here, and I can link over here with color. As you can see here, we have some gradients going on, bright and dark, but I really don't want that because uh, I, what I need, I need to have kind of circle going on here and the dark on the edge. Yeah, so this is kind of uh, quadratic sphere. Uh, yeah, so that, that's kind of like the shape that I want, but the center is down here. I want it in the center of the square. So what I can do, I can actually hit control T. If you don't have this, you're making sure you put the node regular on, add on. Uh, enable that and you know how to do that. Uh, there are tons of to do, uh, tutorials on YouTube show you how to do this. And, and then the next thing I'm going to do usually is coming out to generate it uh, to the vectors. I am actually want to use the object to the vector. Okay, cool. So now we have something like kind of what I want. Uh, and usually that's how light works is gen generally have a hot spot and then gradually kind of getting uh, Disappear and then it's not the, the, the brightness is gonna fade off uh, to the edge. So, this is what a real light is supposed to look like in, uh, in photography. And, and another thing we want to we can do to make this thing a little bit better, you can do that or not. And this is works just fine. And you can adjusting how, how bright you want and do anything. For me, I feel like this is kind of fall off too quickly. Uh, so, I what I want to do, I want to add a, a color. Uh, color ramp okay just put it in here and then as you can see the black representing the black uh, the highlight representing the the, the the brightest part of the this light so what I want to do I want to adding another point in the center so I what I can do see I'm moving here if I move to towards to the right hand side I'm actually getting more gray color on this Right, so I can just kind of do that and just manipulating how how much fall off that I wanted to have. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, and it, it can, I can even kind of getting something crazy. But this is not really a uh, realistic lighting lo supposed to look like. So I'm just doing this way, and you can even adding one more, just to kind of getting something to kind of gradually fall off. You can see the center hot spot is getting smaller. Yeah, you can do, if I turn this thing up, and 
you can really see what I mean. You see, you see, the gray part is getting very bigger, and uh, it will be more gradually to decrease on the edge. So you can play with it, uh, but that's kind of the light that I use when I photographing, or I mean the photographing, when I'm lighting something very reflective with texture like a glass, like a pure metal, and it's very reflective. That's kind of the light I use. I don't use this one, which is the regular light, area light. So it the, the area area light is just going to to works. Um, see it's R X it's just going to work like a regular uh, white box and it, it, it's going to illuminating everything evenly on the, all the corners and that's giving a terrible look when you're trying to reflecting uh, re when you're trying to light some reflective surface so that's kind of what we're using now so in order to do that so next thing we want to do here as you can see we are going to back to the scene again. I'm going to do that. Let me close that. Uh, we are having this one. So basically, what this uh, this lighting act, uh, light is working in here is put a zero. And uh, as you can see here, for this light, we have a quite a bit of light mixed together. And if you look closely for this top part. It looks exactly the one we just made, right? Emission shader, text, gradient textures, and color ramps, and we did that. But the, the, the only difference is in here is the positions, the locations. So as you can see with these node preview add-on that I highly recommend if you uh, like to purchase these, I can put the link below and, and you can actually get this. So you will see how this gradient works along these nodes. So I'm just changing some position of that. So look carefully, if I'm moving this X, so you can see something, yeah, something going on here. The reason why? The reason is this is just kind of one of the hot spot that uh, appear, appearing, appearing on this type of thing, as you can see here. So it has Although this is just one single light, but I have three different hotspots, right? In the real world, again, in the photography world, this is supposed to be some sunlight translucent diffusion panel. And you are going to, using a ex exterior light, to kind of hit over a certain, certain spot in order to creating this type of gradients in the, in, in the actual studio. I know it's a, it sounds a little bit confusing, but and this is what a, how professional photographer done lightings in the in the in the studio. That's how to get it done. And uh, this is another light supposed to be somewhere hitting on this diffusion panel. Although in the CGI world it looks black, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the, I'm just trying to give you a making point. And then this is going to be a third light hitting this. So they're creating a different spot of gradient by actually using a mixed shader. We are just adding one more light, you see? So if I'm I'm having this guy, so I can just move right here, right? Yeah, I can kind of positioning the light. It just works like the, in the real world, you basically positioning a light somewhere to hitting this diffusion panel in order to, in order to do what? In order to, to, sh to let this material, the metal to reflect what's going on ar around it then. I hope this thing you can. I hope that you understand this a little bit better, and I can show you. For this is this is not this is one light, right? This is second light, so we can just manipulating. You can see, yeah. So I'm controlling everything that I can move up, down. I'm just controlling the way how the thing is reflecting. So this is kind of how it works in the in the real world. And then this is another third light. It's still same thing. It's just different positions right a different position if i'm over here yeah you see all these things you can get this thing done just using one single light but you have like different hot spot and you can just continue mix 
shader and if you want to need more lights just add it on it's just like a real photographer does just adding more light to really hit the reflecting areas and make this thing look so nice and neat and as you can see here the surrounding is kind of like transparent what i have done then here is i'm going to this uh what is that called i think well, yeah this, this camera icons render properties yeah and I go to the film you do the transparent right it, that that's transparent you do and also one thing you probably surprised like why, why this materials everything is not showing in the render view was well, because another trick that i use and which is very very lovely uh, this if I selecting this light and if I'm going to the uh, what's this called object property and scrolling down here there's a ray visibility and it's at the camera right if I'm checking this thing on you can see this right now you can see it you can see this thing through the through the uh, uh, viewport if I go to hit zero go to the camera view it just blocked everything yeah, it's blocked everything. It's there, and, and is you can see on the lens, uh, through the lens. That's why it's showing these. In the again, in the real photography studios, usually you will cut a hole through this lens. Then you can see what's inside, right? But again, in the in the Blender, in CGI, no, we don't need to do that. We can just uncheck this ray visibility camera. Damn, we can see what's inside. It's kind of cutting a hole without doing anything okay so again for for this side also for this cylinder i did the same thing you see you can do that you can you can having this on camera or not so in this situation i'm actually don't need to check it off it doesn't really affect anything it's going to still going to reflecting the areas of of where this force is going to reflecting so again i want to uh, to uh, explain my point again to about the reflecting thing so right now the cylinder I have a I have a a texture on it although I had right at white and right now it's actually the pure black so if I'm changing the color of this uh, right now so selecting this and I'm at, what I'm going to do I'm going to to drag another window to kind of show you what's going on in inside a, in the through the camera view go here yeah, it's going here. So I'm selecting this light cylinder. If I'm actually changing the color of that, or even do something crazy, you will know which part this cylinder is reflecting on this silverware. Is that, is that interesting? Yes, this is how things work. It's not really how much light you're hitting on this silverware's reflective surface. It's what's surrounding what's the surrounding environment looks like is this amazing yes this is something that photographers know very well and uh, a lot of cgi artists don't know what's how things get done so if i'm getting uh, if i'm turning this thing to pure black uh, whatever works and then you have you can see there's some ni nice edge and also black content uh color shade uh black areas that reflecting beautifully for the silverware and well basically this is how get how you get it done um in this in this scene just using one single light and uh i think this is really good uh, lighting a uh, class for you to understanding how to use these lights in the in the blenders uh, i i firmly believe within these knowledge you will do a lot of amazing renders when you're using using the proper light rather than the default area light or spotlight anything so you have to uh, to, to really think like a photographer and also to learning the lighting how to make things looks pretty and how each material is reflecting the environment how to properly illuminate them okay well that's it well thank you for watching this tutorials and uh, uh i really appreciate your support and uh if you want to hang out and uh you can follow me on instagram or if you're really into these type of photorealistic render for products anything yes you're in the right place please consider con uh, subscribe my channel and i will continue uploading some 
uh, Blender tutorials and to help you to getting good at it and uh, in the render. All right. Thank you so much. I will see you in the next video. Bye.